Now, for more on the upcoming summit in East China's Hangzhou city, let's cross live to our reporter Liu Xing in Geneva. Hello, Liu Xing. You've been in close contact with some of the world's biggest international organizations as they prepare for the upcoming big event. So, what will be new this year? Indeed, something uh, very interesting and very new this year is the heavy involvement of uh, international organizations under the United Nations. This has never been the case in the past 11 or 12 year history of the G20. And the reason why I'm talking here is so because uh, many, uh, some of the most important international organizations that will be closely involved in the G20 summit are based here in Geneva. We're talking about the World Trade Organization, for instance. We're talking about uh, the UNCTAD, which is the UN agency to monitor global uh, direct foreign investment flows. We're also talking about the International Labour Organization, which is uh, uh, dealing with all kinds of issues related to employment and the labour mar labor market. This indeed is one of the characteristics of this year's summit. That is, is a very transparent coordination and policy discussion process where relevant professional international organizations are invited so that the decision making can be more coordinated and on a more sound basis. We know the WTO has launched a uh, World Trade uh, Outlook Indicator, which is a new index to provide real-time world trade uh, flow statistics to G20 member countries so that they can better coordinate and base their policy upon. Another very important uh, characteristic of this year's summit, as you have mentioned, is the openness and the inclus inclusiveness of this year's summit. We have heard countries that have traditionally not been included in the G20 Block have been invited, for instance, uh, Egypt representing Middle, uh, Middle um, Eastern countries, uh, Senegal representing African countries, uh, G77, which uh, group a lot of countries in the developing world. Indeed, this is all aimed at uh, expanding the representation of this year's G20 policy making so that the greater majority of world economy and people around the world will benefit from this year's summit. Pandeng. Uh, well, Liu Xin, let's talk a little bit more about trade. Do, uh, from your observation, do you think there's a comeback of protectionism? Should uh, policymakers around the globe uh, get worried? Of course, it's a very worrying trend. As uh, we have uh, learned from statistics, it is the very first time in history where we're seeing a prolonged period of trade, sluggish trade growth. In fact, the trade growth in the past uh, six, seven years have been lower than the average world economic uh, growth. This, is, uh, this has been never seen uh, in the history of uh, economic development that we have uh, documented uh, evidence. Therefore, it is uh, indeed a a prolonged sluggish trade growth and that is the background of the rise of trade protectionist uh, measures. According to a WTO report on G20 trade restrictive measures that were released earlier uh, last month from the period of mid-October last year to mid-May this year, G20 economies applied an average of 20 trade restrictive measures on a monthly basis and that is compared with a, a rolling back of uh, trade the restrictive measures of, uh, by the number of 14, which means while they are rolling back some trade restrictive measures, they are putting out more trade restriction measures. So overall, when you divide uh, 12 by 14, the overall trend is in the wrong direction towards trade protectionism. That is why uh, WTO Director General Roberto Azevedo, in his comments to the report, he said, we have long been concerned about the growing stockpile of trade restrictive measures measures and our report suggests that this worrying trend is continuing and he says a rise in trade restriction, a rise in protectionism is the last thing the world needs today. That is why this year's G20 summit must tackle how to reverse the trend of trade protectionism. Meanwhile, we're also talking about not so rosy picture in the field of international investment as shown in the UNCTAD OECD 15th report of G20 investment measures. Although among the documented policies there is not a clear rise of investment protectionism, however, there are uh, other factors which are not so traceable that point to a protectionist um, trend. For instance, the latest news coming out of Australia is that uh, the Australian government cited national security concern and barred